they must have bought them. They still haven't come to an agreement or anything, I don't think. He told me yesterday. You know, I put four hundred dollars in this basket. I don't think I said, well, we won't get rid of them. I'm going to pay. I got a lot of money now. Yeah, 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 because Joel had, would, had asked what people bought, you know, to go for and stuff. One guy says, there's plenty of years, if I went to bed with $200. Yeah. Yeah. He says, yes, you're going to get honey immediately, yeah. but you're going right into winter. Yeah. You don't know if they're going to win or not. Yeah. Especially with moving on. Yeah, I would take it to it. I would not do that.
Facebook at all? Yeah, we're, uh, so you know, I'm sure I'm oh, I'm pretty sure that person tried to friend me on Facebook yesterday. You ever had that? Yeah. 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 Well, I don't, I don't friend a lot of people in their family, so, yeah. I'm not actually on Facebook all that much during elections either.
Question concerning the ordinance is one one point three Open Records Act ordinance update. What does that entail? That is, I have to ask Tammy for sure. Oh, that's the one that uh, Red Heron wanted to change. Oh, 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 this yeah. one right here. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. yeah those are just yes. Red Heron. What it does is it changes it to every department is responsible um, for releasing records. In other words, we're going to be hiring an attorney to go through records that we need to. It was set up to where he would be the last person as an attorney before records leave, and he doesn't want it that way. He wants every office to be responsible for their own records. Okay. So, since you're updating an ordinance, are you going to put this on next week's agenda? Yeah, well, they're just, uh, they, they haven't decided they're going to do it yet. Okay. They have to decide they're going to do it today. Then they'll put it uh, for the next meeting. Because I know I looked up and realized it should be on two agendas. Right. Yeah. What?
Um, I was reading through our current ordinance um, for the Open Records Act, and I was just curious if you were updating the part about the attorney, if you would also be changing some of the other wording, such as it looked like every open records request needed to be run by all elected officials and their supervisors. Um, so I didn't know if that was like, if it was requested to, to the auditor's office, to be the auditor plus the supervisors, or if the supervisors were included, it, it seemed a little vague. No, the, um, the yeah. open records, um, that, that's just a code, that, that's part of the code. It says um, that the department head the whole the keeper of the record so no that'll stay nothing will change except for uh releasing it through the attorney they'll just release it themselves okay because the way i was reading it looked like a request to a different department still had to be presented to the supervisors before it was released and such so it, it looked like it was well, no, well, no. <laughs> no no it just goes to the, the person of the records okay as, as i
next month or in Get a motion to approve previous minutes. I'll make a motion to approve minutes. I'll second. All right, got a motion and a second for the minutes. All there? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Ben. up replacing a wooden deck on 265th, just north of Elbron. Um, we'll be spraying, patching that deck, and then kind of doing a few other decks, and then um, if time allows, we'll be working on some spray patching some of our roads that we have that need to be taken a look at. So, you know, Cedar Rapids Road, and then you know, Cloudbrook, um, some of the seal coats that we have on um, and then uh, oh, uh, right now we're working on X Avenue uh, South advisor uh, there's a whole section there that we're raising up that should take a few days um, and then once that's done we're going to be moving to 140th Street to fix this um, kind of do this similar um, sort of deal on that um, just west of B mm -hmm. Avenue have a water line so able to dig the ditch like we were wanting to, so we're going to raise it up a little bit. Um, and then, I forgot to put it on, but when I was driving over, I was reminded, um, I met with Mid-American last week. Um, they're done with all their top-off activities, so like replacing the blades and the tops of the towers, so they're done with that. Um, right now, they'll be, and they moved to Crane Marshall um, to finish it up. They're removing radiuses um, that they made kind of on, um, on 96 and then all the other um, radiuses. They're kind of clean, cleaning that up and seeding that. Um, in a couple weeks, um, I know I'll be um, probably writing with them and kind of I think writing with them as well to uh, just to make sure roads are in decent shape and then we'll kind of go from there. I got a utility permit. Um, it's for community communications data link, which um, on behalf of MediaCom and they're uh, got like a, a, a small stretch on T forty seven um, that they're um, going to do some. Um, there was some damage that um, that was done, and then they're just replacing all all faults. Six 
housing trust fund. And Tampa County has been a great partner with us, along with the other three counties, with uh, funding the housing trust fund over the last 14, 15 years. So, uh, in the last uh, nine years, we've spent uh, about 418000 Trust fund. Um, I think all of our projects in Tampa County have been improving <coughs> unoccupied homes across the county. So everybody in the county to qualify has to be under a certain income limit. So for a family of four, that income limit is about sixty-seven thousand today. Family of two is about fifty-three thousand. So that's a gross. So in order for us to apply for funds every year from the Iowa Finance Authority, which is state funds, uh, we have to secure a 25% local match. Um, so this year we can apply for about 450,000 and then we need to secure $112,000 of local funds. So we've historically, since the beginning of the fund, divided that per capita across the four counties to be fair and equitable. So the amount from Tama County here is 20,803. I would note that we're a little bit behind the per capita level here for Tama County. Uh, so we're proposing to reserve $200,000 of funding in late 24 and 25 uh, for Tama County so that we can get closer to the per capita level. Um, it just, we don't control <coughs> applications and we just to put a time stamp on when applications come in. So sometimes in other counties too, we've had to kind of reserve funds for a while to get back to the per capita level. Uh, so uh, that that's one change I need to know. Uh, the, the fund is generally just preserving uh, existing homes within the county, so we're doing emergency housing repairs. Uh, with the past disasters that have rolled through the area, we've set aside funds for the derecho, uh, for housing repairs, and I guess the tornado really didn't affect here, but we set aside money with the tornado and Marshall Fund. So if there's future disasters that affect Tama County, we'll definitely set aside money and prioritize funds to go for the county for preserving existing affordable housing. Uh, the other improvements we do are in siding and windows. Right now we have a very extensive waiting list. We're probably three to four years, frankly, before we get to uh, some of the people on our waiting list assistance uh, so the, the need is tremendous out there and there's a tremendous number of old homes in every county here in the region so uh, doing these kind of improvements is definitely a, a good thing to preserve the house and make sure it's affordable I guess water damage can do huge amounts of damage to the property really quickly so uh, that's why I would and past disaster events prioritize the roof to get it stable and secure and uh, leak proof. So, uh, so that's funding from uh, Tama County, which is 28,803, would be in your next uh, fiscal year budget. So that would be in FY uh, 25, 26. Mm -hmm. The amount uh, from Tama County has actually increased a little bit over the last uh, few years uh, because the state money has increased uh, a good amount. And likewise, when the state money increased a good amount roughly four years ago, uh, they uh, initially set the local match a little lower so that counties and other places that contribute money for the local match wouldn't uh, have such a problem. So it used to be down around 20 or 21 percent 
I mentioned the first year we were back at 25%. So, because of the previous request that I had for the county just to be open here was 17,665. So this one was 20,803. Um, beyond that, I can try to answer any questions that you have. I don't think I have any. Would you like to read it? I sure can. So it'd be resolution 819-2024A, a resolution to approve the Region 6 Housing Trust Fund to Yuma County cash contribution. Whereas the Region 6 Housing Trust Fund can annually apply for approximately $450,560 of Iowa Finance Authority State Housing Trust Funds and the Trust Fund secures, if the Trust Fund secures $112,640 of local contributions and whereas the per capita state share for Tama County is $83,211 if $20,803 of local assistance is secured. And whereas the IFA expects that 30% of the state funds be expended for households under 30% of the county median, which is $135,168, and it can be difficult some years to find projects under these income values. And whereas the Housing Trust Fund directly supports at least 8 to 10 construction jobs annually, and whereas the Housing Trust Fund has expended $418,383, of funds from 2015 to 2023, which is below the per capita level of $545,692. So Region 6 HTF propose, proposes to reserve about $200,000 of funding for projects in Tama County in late 2024 and 2025. So these per capita values are closer. And whereas all the applicants must have annual incomes under 80% of the county median as determined by HUD. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors of Tama County, Section 1, Tama County will provide $20,803 of cash to support the 2025 Region 6 Housing Trust Fund application. This assistance will provide be provided in fiscal year 2025-2026. All right. Can I get a motion to approve that? I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 6 Housing Trust Fund contribution. I'll second. Thank you for your continued support. No, thank you. It makes a for huge else. difference uh, yeah. for households around the county. Yeah. You bet. So I really appreciate the long term partnership. It's a thank you. Trip. Thank you, Marty. HR. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Um, Brent requested that we make a change to the ordinance um, and the wording changes um, from the records uh, will um, be looked over by Brent. He wants that out of there. He wanted um, to say that each elected um, person or the office that produces the public records will be the ones that oversee. All right, you just need a motion to approve this. Yes. You, you need to put it on the agenda. To to on the agenda. Yeah. Do we need a motion or anything? I say let's do a motion to put it on the agenda. Yes, put it on the agenda. For okay, okay. I'll make a motion to uh, okay. uh, put this on next week's agenda. I'll okay. second that. All right, a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Alrighty, can I get a motion to approve the claims? I'll make a motion to approve the claims this week at $219,774.81. I'll second it. Alright, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. and approve essential services advisory council recommendations for tax levy amount. Um, you're, the, you're the 
Well, I'm yeah, Julie Scadden. I'm also the Sarah Exchange County Animal Association. I am the chair of the advisory council. Um, got Billy Van Eggman, she's the vice chair. Ryan is our secretary, um, and then I've got a couple of uh, advisory council members, Kern from Labrook Lincoln, and Mike from Montour, and Jeremy and I'm on the winning board. Um, we've been working on this since you guys appointed us in June. I gave you guys some paperwork of the different things that we looked at when we were trying to get to determination. The biggest thing is gonna be the, um, the year expense loss. We looked at five, 10, 15 years, starting with this year's current and then comparison for each transport service and then the two first responder units. And you'll see that we're all in deficit. And at the end of 15 years, which is how long this tax levy would work, would be good for, um, countywide, EMS services would be a little over 1.7 million in deficit, which is why we're looking at this tax levy to begin with. And then you'll see we broke it down from five, 10, 15 year, every year is in deficit. So we all need help. First responder units don't make any money. So every year we're in deficit, period. And then I also gave you a breakdown. We looked at priority list of needs. And our priorities are always gonna be um, workforce first. Um, but we don't have the kids that volunteers. We had a system survey um, that I think I shared before. Uh, and we 80% have, I came back to 80% of the people said no, we wouldn't volunteer. In that, when we asked, where are you willing to volunteer? And 80% of them said no. So we just can't find volunteers anymore. And transport wise, we're gonna have to start looking at hiring. And so wage is gonna be a big part of that. Stipend wise, um, for the services that are gonna try to keep doing volunteers, we're gonna have to look at increasing stipends to try to get that incentivized to get people to do it or get people to stay on there. So that's gonna be a big chunk of what this money's probably gonna go for. And then if you look down the list, we used this year's costs, and it's not estimated out to 15 years. So a lot of what we base this on is what is gonna look like in 15 years, because what we decide on today is has to last us to, for 15 years. So that's all what we based our recommendation on. And then we used, um, Laura did us, based off tax property values now, what we would be able to generate. And so that's how we came up with our recommendation of 75 cents per thousand, which would generate right now 885,000. <coughs> so our recommendation is to do the top dollar of 75 cents per thousand. So you can put on the dollar. Just do what we can to keep going, I guess. You know? Thank you. Know, 
I know there's communities out there who are losing them. Yeah. So there are a lot of services that are closing down. I know that Hoosiers would suck. down to Hoosiers down to I think maybe three of the responders are actually certified in the law and call. Well, let's hope it works. All righty. Um, discuss and approve resolution to establish county compensation board. If you all don't know, the state passed. I can give a little blurb about it if you want about yeah. that. Yeah, can you do that? So on May 1st of 2024, Governor Reynolds signed um, Senate File 2442. Um, the vision of this tax omnibus bill makes changes to the county compensation board system. These provisions authorize boards of supervisors in each county to determine whether they want to utilize a compensation board or take on the duties and responsibilities themselves. By law, all compensation boards are resolved on July 1st, 2024. So you guys can decide if you would like to establish a compensation board. Yeah, and I think we've talked about this before. Um, I, I think we're all three. just think it would be a good idea to have somebody over you when there's any kind of money involved. It's always nice to have a be able to watch you. So I don't, I don't think any of us are against it. So I think we can probably just get a motion and I'll make a motion to. Do we need to do it by resolution? Do you want me to read that resolution? Oh uh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Um, it's resolution eight dash nineteen dash twenty twenty four B resolution establishing a county compensation board. The resolution by Tanner County to establish a county compensation board as authorized by Iowa Code Section 331.905, whereas pursuant to Iowa Code Section 331.905, as amended in 2024 by Senate File 2442, the County Board of Supervisors may vote to establish a county compensation board. Whereas pursuant to this code section, when the Board of Supervisors establishes a county compensation board, the compensation board shall be comprised of seven members who are residents of the county. Two members shall be appointed by the Board of Supervisors, one member each by the county auditor, county attorney, county recorder, county treasurer, and county sheriff. The members of the county compensation board shall not be officers or employees of the state or a political subdivision of the state and shall serve staggered terms. Whereas lots were drawn to determine the duration of initial staggered terms for members of the county compensation board. Now, therefore, be it resolved, King of County hereby establishes a county compensation board for the county. Be it further resolved, King of County directs each of the elected officials to submit their respective appointments to the board of supervisors by October 1st of 2024. Be it further resolved, one representative of the Board of Supervisors and the representatives of the County Treasurer, County Auditor, and County Attorney shall, shall serve an initial term of four years, and one representative of the Board of Supervisors and the representatives of the County Sheriff and County Recorder shall serve an initial term of two years. Be it further resolved, this resolution shall apply retroactively for July 1st, 2024. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 8-19-2024B to establish a county compensation board. Second that. Okay, and we'll call vote. Kurt? Aye. Bill? Aye. And Dan? Aye. Uh, and you approve the traveling tapsters temporary license, liquor license for Kansas County Market. Yep, so Tanner County Market is a business that Chris Drummer does out of her home near Chelsea. She's had many of them, and they like to um, have alcohol served at a few of them. And so this is one that they plan on serving on September 12th. So it's a five-day liquor license. All heavy. Everything was okay? Yep, everything was, was okay. Yep, everything was okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the traveling tapster temporary liquor license. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, we need a approval, discussion approval of the same thing for Lucky Life Wine Slushies. And this is for the Team of County Market. Yep, and this one's for September 15th. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Discuss and approve local Lucky Wife Wine Slushies Temporary Liquor License for Oak Ridge MX. Motocross. 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 Yep. 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 So, and they would like to serve on September 21st and September 22nd. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve Lucky Wife Wine Slushies Temporary License. I will second that. 
Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. It's up to you. And the uh, variety of calls too, because uh, 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 I uh, I've I've uh, had people say a couple things and whatnot. So, uh, especially like from week to week, how like one week may spike, you know. And call, I mean, I think that's you know, you know nonsense. So I I thought I like uh, uh, personally. I thought, you know, like, 4th of July was going to be, like, the bi like the biggest one, but then it didn't, and, you know, I was, you know, yeah, yeah, so, you know, anyway, so I think it's been working out well, so, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I, uh, I haven't, uh, put the last one you got, you sent me, uh, on the website yet, but, uh, I was a little late getting to you, I'll get you today, I'll get you this one today. Go back over That's fine. <laughs> and when, uh, but because uh, I'm not the one that does the website, mm -hmm. as if I just um, because the I don't know if you met her, um, Ruby. Ruby, yeah. Yeah. yeah so she does the website stuff. I have no idea how it works, but I don't. I just share it to Facebook and all that. So. Um, so yeah, so uh, I, I'm, I'll be sending that to her today and stuff. So, so um, but yeah, no, I think it's been working out great. And so I don't think we need to, you know, do the past week, you know. But uh, but no, I think it's been working out great. And so yeah, yeah. I, I was actually because the reason I thought of it, I think I told you Kelowna, and so I get that paper, and so I went down there. Uh, a month or two ago, and um, and, and uh, met my friend and stuff, and I, I told him that you know, and uh, I said it doesn't have all the description yours does and stuff because they have like you know like notes and stuff with it and stuff, and uh, they said well we only get like seventy calls, oh, and I said well we we get like four hundred cents. And he goes, what the hell's happening up there? Yeah, exactly. So I kind of shocked them with that, but yeah. And, and I, I guess, you know. Yeah, I wish we could have done a little bit more in there, but holy crap, that would take me two days to do that. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, I exactly. Would, once I realized that's what made the difference, you know, which granted, it's all Amish down there practically, so. Sure, sure. So I don't, yeah, I don't think, you know. The Amish are getting too rough, you know. No, that's what I mean. so. Typically not. Yeah. No, good. Good to hear the lecture. No, yeah, because like, like beforehand we had, because like the chiefs uh, say numbers at the meetings and whatnot, and I put on there, and then there'd be some some ass comment, you know, prove the numbers and stuff and whatnot. But I'm like, so, but I think so. I think you know, it's really been. I think I think it's been good. So. Thank you. 